we would like you to add additional attributes as they go and find useful and necessary to find the process. So it's not dependent on the development process, what I'm trying to say. Of course, we can do it for you, but there's no code anymore. Nobody needs to go and write any code to create new attributes. It's configuration. Anybody can go in the system and do it. Just a comment from my side of the field. Um, I'd like to propose that we break one of the afternoon sessions tomorrow into a parallel track where we actually have a, a hot usability group with a bunch of us sitting around and really working through the system itself. I think the diagram that you had, you put up the original, if you want to put it is something that would be fantastic, especially from the visual way to draw down to artifacts. Um, I think we spoke about it on a call um, on the desert. So I think you know, we'll look at breaking out and just advertising out tomorrow amongst the sessions to make you have the breakout sessions like this. Can, can I just make a comment and Chrissy Brooks looking at you in particular? You know, we got this great project of which you're kind of leading up the, the implementation team and we've created all of these artifacts. Some of them sit on my laptop, probably a greater sense it's on your laptop. There's there's an internal project curation strategy that we've not really talked about yet. And you know, this model presumes, for example, that there's an independent repository that is able to link to. They talked about making one repository available for those who don't have one. I think we as a project, a rare project, needs to make a clean decision in terms of where we want those artifacts to be. Do we want you know, someone like me to upload them? Do you upload them? Does it happen to this sub version repository they talked about earlier? And make some project based decisions about the curation. Then I think um, there won't, I mean, I think there's some value in spending some time thinking about that up front to make sure that all of the stuff from number one is properly going kind to of put it in there's a process for it. Does that make sense? Because we start running into issues of like, you and I have the same artifact and we upload them and how do we keep track of that? There's probably some ways that we can prevent that kind of stuff from happening, like you know, CRC and stuff like this. But, you know, anyways, I, mean, I think the point is there's some internal project where they said I think we need to be thoughtful as well. We haven't really thought about it. I don't think we should allow machine to decide whether we, you're allowed to allow the natural data or not yet. It should be a human decision, but it can be addressed from a process standpoint at the moment, so you move the device for you to search for a NASA before you have to see something that is already there. Yeah. Okay. But the project, I mean, the Rwanda project needs to decide, you know, like, for example, Richard needs to decide, you know, we've got the subversion repository, does that become the repository for all times for Rwanda's project, and do they own that repository, right? That's the case, and that's what we link off of from this, right? So that we can make a contract that's going to always be there. And if we don't feel comfortable with that, do we use the repository that they're thinking about putting up? These are some of the decisions that we should get to sooner than later, and that will allow other things to fall into place. Because those are necessary decisions, so keep in mind that those are not once and for all decisions you have to make. You can keep your repository or change it to something else, and you can make that change as many times as necessary. It is our goal to help you facilitate the changes so you can you know, you don't lose uh, your assets in the process. But but we don't expect that people will pull the assets into the process and keep it there forever. You know, the, the version will change. So we need to have an, an ability for somebody to say, well, now it's somewhere else. Okay. Okay. Chris. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I think that's only half the problem with what we're all seeing. I mean, it's more of an administrative housekeeping kind of issue, I think, that Paul's highlighting. Is how do we um, curate our, all the assets that are coming out? How do we put them in one place? Even though know, technically we may be able to change the URI or things like that, I think it's going to be a big job. So I think what Paul's highlighting is that, um, and I think that was kind of one of the underlying themes coming out this afternoon. Is what is the documentation or the assets that we are trying to extract out of the way projects at this point? 
put in the food based on the bottom line. And I think one is very useful to focus our thinking around how that should be and how these things should be structured and set Yeah, I mean, just to give you an anecdote, like say, for example, there's something that I am using as a little worksheet, and I want to share it in the midst of this writing project. I mean, I need to know, do I put it on the subversion repository and then link to it from there? Or do I, you know, post it in the, in the heart repository? Just, there's a little bit of an internal process where we come to some consensus on it. Here's how we add it. I mean, because one of the really beautiful things about this is once you, once you add it to this and you give it proper labels, then it creates a URL that is forever kind of fixed. And that's something I can put in the email to draw other people's attention to it. And that's what I think will draw people into using this. You don't have to, you can, you can get to this repository through a link that you send to someone else and it gets down to that specific asset. And then they can say, oh, there's this whole website about, you know, it's a repository. Let me go look for other stuff too. And then that's what actually will get people actually using it versus, you know, like the hub is one of the criticisms that I have the hub is that you have to log in and create this account in order to be able to go and discover. And the reality is that oftentimes you don't think to go discover. Someone is saying, you know, go look at this one asset, and then they can step back and say, what's this website? And then they can start, you know, using it a little bit more. So, I don't know. Yeah, we were discussing this at the break, with, um, which is going to require a kind of policy for how you use art. Um, it was really by what Richard said earlier about some of the assets being having a very fast uh, turnaround time in terms of modification and other things being very long lasting. So, at which point in that kind of continuum of um, how fast these assets change do we decide to, to commit them there? And um, I think there are a lot of other issues around, I mean, when I created the Dropbox, which is really with the repository driving uh, at least the Rwandan assets within part of the moment, um, those are all linked to get to a public URL and uh, the whole last thing is that going to be. So I think there's a whole issue within part as to how hard deals with external repositories. But I mean, we wouldn't be having this discussion if we didn't have the problem. So I think that, that's the value of this project. So a couple of words about what's next for us, and I just will give you a tough one to we'll discuss soon. So the system will become a lot more usable when the security is in place and that's fast, and you will see that the developer is in the next three weeks uh, or so. Uh, we'll go back to the discussion on how to extract the metadata from quote-unquote, well-known file formats is something we're working on right now. And we feel that it's critically important that we provide some level of functionality using that pulling uh, back to the enterprise architecture. Uh, those files are actually in some of the files and uh, stop us from extracting all of the metadata to the form. Now, the, the challenge is, of course, is not because it's there to increase the level of Hard. And if not, uh, if not everything is not, then whether we will allow a lot of metadata propagation or creation or not, that's something that's a completely separate discussion. Because the minute you will turn on the uh, machine processing, you can quickly put good data into our vision. And very quickly. And so then uh, curate the role to become unbearable. So we need to have a timeline between allowing some level of construction of the equality which we will have to allow a, a complete model creation from farm. That's something technically possible, but you know, we need to discuss as a team whether it's feasible. I can keep talking about it, but I think we could discuss the core functionality in some different points and the system will
education that costs that Richard is derived from Richard's original strategic value. I think I'm going to reinforce that, that um, that's an incredibly powerful visual model because it, you know, apart from allowing you to, to go into a particular um, domain that you're interested in, it also shows you, gives you visual cues about all the other domains. So you know that there's governance on the side, that there's standards at the bottom, that there's an infrastructure. So it contextualizes the whole thing and I mean, people probably have been able to uh, get to digest the whole model, but um, all those vertical, the longer vertical parts, all the kind of domains in healthcare. So if you're looking for logistics and supply chain information, you can literally click on that and you can go in. So I think it's really something to think about that as one kind of entrance into the system, a uh, visual navigation model. Keep the discussion with him this and see how we can uh, either, if, it's, if it depends itself well to the environment structure, and if not, then how we can improve the environment structure so we can do that itself better. Is it possible? And this is the type of inventory, and this is great. This is exactly what we need to get out of, but this, that's why we begin here.
is sort of mentioned like a, a grouping of, of documents. Right. So, uh, so, the so there are multiple ways of grouping in the absence. There are logical groups uh, for the relationships, and there are physical groups of all the numbers. So you can, you can have an asset that consists of multiple other assets, like a fraction. Or you can have an asset like uh, an uh, enterprise architecture file that consists of some models. So one physical asset has a set of some components and can be a So there are two ways of doing this. So when I take you to have something like a group, all the better project, and then break the hand with 10 hands, so to do that, then find the topic to the level. Oh, yeah, that's that's something I can show. When you have a group, you have a group, so if I group for something, to 
a number of you who are you know, be God uh, On the other hand, there's some of you who have different goals or different level of, uh, of uh, where you are, how long you've been involved in the project, and, and what you're doing, where it's at a secret level. And this has to be such that you're not overwhelmed when you're going through it. So that those different views we talk about, it has to meet the user where they are and what they need. And it has to get the extensible enough that it can accommodate you as you grow and as you uh, uh, have more and more needs. And uh, those are uh, usability, the, the different views that uh, the course showed at the beginning of the definition. Those are roles that there may be other features or you know, let the software, there's a simple version and there's an extra version. That those are the things interacting with you that you need to know. So if you're looking at this thing, oh, I'm lost now. That we need to be with you. It isn't that you have to pull away. We need to understand that because we have to know what other um, variables, what other uh, ways of making it simpler uh, you might have. And that's very important to you. On the other hand, if you think, you know, this isn't what I want, I want to do, I don't want to have a pull down every time I want to check boxes. You know, whatever it is, we need to listen. And we're going to be having that feedback with our group with Chris, Carl, and Paul, and Ed, and others who are going to kind of see that so that we can begin to take that, that feedback. And you may you know, come up with the thing that we have not even thought of, of a different way of thinking. Uh, Certainly, my experience, and I think for those of us who've been in this law, is anybody can make a contribution. This is not about how well you know the details in there. Just the, the feedback that you give can be very important. So the, world, the only way you know how to encourage your feedback is to listen and to do what you ask for. And that's what we're doing this fall, and that's what we're going to do with every single one of you. We will listen, and we will make changes, and we will make changes too. And if we're wrong, we'll make changes again. But the only way we can make those changes is to be us. How any other constructive criticism is greatly appreciated. I do, I do think, just real quick, I don't need a microphone. Um, getting, uh, okay, getting that repository that, um, so not presuming that someone has a link to a file on a network somewhere, I think getting that up and going would be useful sooner than later given the audience is that we're serving. I think it's unusual for a project to have a separate repository for its artifacts. And so I think um, getting that earlier in the trajectory of what you make available, I think is really important. I would disagree. I think having something as simple as a uh, project driven uh, Dropbox and subversion uh, instant software is in our server would be sufficient as well. It worded in a way where it says something to the effect that either you know upload your your artifact or point to your artifact. That's exactly how it's designed. Yeah. Absolutely, it's just a matter of priority. What you're asking for is in the design today. Absolutely, uh, I agree with you. Just make that activation energy so freaking low. That if someone just wants to come and write a couple of sentences and upload a file, and bam, then you've done the work of making it available on their behalf, which is helpful to them. And they have that link that they can immediately then put it in an email. Like it's going to be hugely useful to appreciate. No doubt, no doubt. And, and we can make it as simple as possible. There will be an upload button, there will be, uh, or you can still put your URI uh, into the system. Either way, it will work. Now, all of that we can get to as soon as the security is somewhat because right now we can't really yeah. that any thoughts. We don't want to have you populate all this all of the information and allow somebody else to uh, do it uh, on your behalf and we can show you how to do so. So security is obviously the higher uh, order priority. But then we'll get to those things in the case of I think it's absolutely right to think about the repository aspect of the market. I think especially for low resource settings, I mean, storage is, is relatively cheap these days, and really 
Thank you very much for us. Thank you. 